In the end of lecture 12, what I want to do this time is do another mixture problem, but this time we're going to have three variables uh, and we want to solve for them in that situation. So imagine little Susie pulls out of her piggy bank and inside of her piggy bank we got 14 coins and the total amount of the coins is a dollar and 35 cents. Her piggy bank consists of only nickels, dimes, and quarters. And so we want to determine how many different nickels, dimes, and quarters are in this in her in her piggy bank there, right? So we might say something like, okay, N is going to equal the number of nickels in little Susie's piggy bank. Uh, we're going to have little D be the number of dimes. Uh, we're going to have Q be the number of quarters in her piggy bank. Now, if you wanted to, you could use variables like X, Y, or Z. That's perfectly fine. But it is sometimes useful to have a mnemonic device, so it's a little bit easier to keep track of later on. N was the the number of nickels and things like that. And as this is a mixture problem, there are some things we'll be able to get really quickly. We know there were 14 coins in the piggy bank. So when we add everything together, N plus D plus Q, this will add up to be 14. This is the total amount. We also know that there is a dollar and 35 cents total in the piggy bank. Nickels are worth five cents. So if we take 0 0.05 times N, each, each, this is a rate right here. Each nickel is worth five cents. There are n nickels, so the product will give us the money, the total amount from the nickels alone. Then we add that to 0 0.10 times d, so that will give us the amount of money that comes from the dimes. And then if we take 0.25 times q, uh, that will give us the amount we get from the quarters, and this should add up to a dollar and 35 cents. Now this is how it worked when we did two by two systems. Um, now, since there's three variables, we need a third equation in order to be able to solve this system of equations. Where does the third one come from? Well, you'll also notice here that we're told that the number of nickels is three times twice the number of dimes. And so let's try to unravel that a little bit. The number of nickels is, when you see the word is, that pretty much always means an equal sign of some kind. So we see that n is, is what? So it's three less than, that means we're going to subtract three from something. It's less than twice the number of dimes. Well, the number of dimes is a D, twice means multiply by two, so we're gonna get a 2D. So N equals 2D minus three. And so we wanna solve this system of equations uh, given the quantity we have. Well, the third equation is actually perfect for substitution, right? N equals 2D minus three. So I'm gonna substitute uh, out the N by plugging in 2D minus three. So for the first equation, N is a 2D minus three. We have a D, we have a Q, this equals 14. Um, combining like terms, 2D plus another D gives us 3D. Uh, and then we're gonna add the three to the other side. So we're gonna get 3D plus Q equals 17. That's one of the equations. So for the next equation, uh, this one right here, um, before I do the substitution, I'm gonna make some slight modifications to it first. So first of all, let's move the decimals over by two to make life a little bit easier. So we end up with uh, 5n plus 10d plus 25q is equal to 135. We could then make the substitution here, but I also notice that everything in this equation is divisible by five. So I'm gonna divide five out of everything. So you're gonna get an n plus a 2d plus a 5q, and then 135 divided by five five is 27. And so we're gonna substitute this into n right here. And so when we do that, we end up with 2d minus three plus 2d plus five q is equal to 27. So this time when you combine the d's together, we're going to get four d, uh, then we get a five q, and then again, we're gonna add three to the other side and we get a 30. And so we're gonna put these together to make our reduced system of equations. We have a 3D plus Q is equal to 17, and we have a 4D plus 5Q is equal to 30. So now we want to solve this system of equations. We can do this by substitution. You know, solving for Q would be a pretty good candidate. Um, I'm going to switch things up, and we're going to switch to uh, elimination this time. So what I'm going to do is a bottom equation by negative 1, and I'm going to multiply the top equation by 5. And so we're going to see what happens here. We're going to end up with a 15D plus 5Q 
is equal to 17 times 5, which is 85. Then we're going to get minus 4d, minus 5q, and then minus 30. Add these together. So 15d take away 4d is that's going to give us 11d. Uh, the fives, the five Qs will cancel out. And then lastly, we get 85 take away 30, which is 55. And so when you divide both sides by 11, we see that D is equal to five. So that means there are five dimes in the piggy bank. Now we have to go back and find out the other variables. Well, remember, so we know, we know that D is now five. Now remember that we know the relationship between nickels and dimes, right? Nickels is 2D minus three. So if D turned out to be five, we're going to get 2 times 5 minus 3, which is 10 minus 3, which is 7. So there are 7 nickels and 5 dimes. Then I would go back to the very original equation, which is probably the simplest one to do right here, because we end up with 7 nickels. We have 5 dimes, and that add that with quarters, you're going to get 14. So we're going to subtract these from the other side, right? Q is going to equal 14 minus 7 minus 5. Uh, 14 take away 7, of course, is 7. Take away 5, uh, we're left with 2, it seems like. And so, therefore, that's how many nickels, dimes, and quarters we have inside of the piggy Let's record this down here. So, Susie has 5 nickels, 7 dimes, and 2 quarters in her piggy bank. That's what we found out right there. And so solving a mixture problem with three variables just comes up, comes down to finding three equations that relate uh, the three variables together and then you solve the resulting system of linear equations. You can solve it using substitution, elimination, uh, whichever, whichever you feel more comfortable with. Now in the next lecture, we're gonna introduce another way of solving systems of equations because although elimination substitutions work, it turns out that the bigger the, and more complicated the problems get, the longer it takes to solve using substitution or elimination. And it turns out there's a few um, inefficiencies inside of the elimination or substitution methods. So we want to basically um, optimize our solving technique uh, with a technique which we'll call Gaussian elimination, which we'll introduce in the next lecture, number 13.